Hey everyone, after a lot of setup work to get my tech set up here, I'm finally ready to set aside some time to record this video. Um, so the backstory on this, what I want to talk about today is the three, um, kind of the daily habit of, um, of a high performing sales rep and um, what I call the RMG of um, a high performing sales rep. So the backstory of the context on this is I'm working with a friend who has an educational um, uh, business who just hired a brand new setter. And I've been tasked with basically onboarding and training this person in 30 days to get him to the point where he can actually produce and create appointments um, and also help close the deal um, and, and create some revenue for, for this organization. Now, caveat aside, if anything, when it comes to hiring and onboarding, a training, a, sell, a setter, especially if they have to pick up the phone um, and do outbound uh, prospecting and sending appointments on a phone, you really need, you know, at least a 90 days plan to really get somebody up to speed and become one of those high performing sales reps. Uh, especially if they have if they have zero sales experience before, right? Uh, however, due to a number of circumstances, I won't go into too much details on um, this person uh, can really have thirty days, and I really want to help my friend out as much as possible. Um, uh, so that's why we have a thirty day window. Um, so the context of this person too is he's never done any sales before, and he's never ever worked online remote only before. So he's always worked in an in-person setting, not in sales, more of a customer service uh, position. So how are we gonna get this person from 30 days, never done anything like this before, never even worked remote to maybe potentially becoming a very valuable part of their organization by helping create more appointments that closes, that show up and closes, right? So one of the topics that I have been working with him on and really try to drill him uh, home for him and for really anybody who's in sales, uh, especially online remote sales, and especially if you're brand new to sales and brand new to working remote, it's kind of like doubling the challenges. It's hard enough to learn sales in the, in the first place and then learning how to work effectively online. Um, a lot of the times people struggle with sales and with online. And um, uh, if I've seen reps that actually give up within the first 30 days because of this coupling of the waves that they have to learn at the same time. So that's the context. Been talking about what are the daily habits of a high performing setter or a salesperson. I'm going to try to keep it very, very simple with three things. And I've been on a triangle <laughs> uh, run lately. When, you, when it, you break down to it, the first thing that you need is rituals. Right, uh, metrics and growth. Okay, and, and what I mean by that, by each of these, is when it comes to working online, um, it's very different than working in the office. And the number one thing that people don't have when they work online is an online, is a kind of a morning priming, getting into the flow. How do you prep yourself for the day, right? Because if you work in an office, you generally have a ritual. Why is that? Because you have to get into your car and drive to the office, right? You have to prep your lunch. Um, you often have to do your hair uh, and start kind of a daily routine. When it comes to working online, most people, when they are starting out, they just kind of roll into like wake up, you know, maybe comb their hair and then start their hop onto a computer just like this. And what I've found is that when you make that transition in the first place, you and, and because you miss that ritual, as much as people hate the commute, that time and that preparation that goes into getting you ready for the office is actually really essential. And it's even more important online as well. Uh, again, because you have to learn, um, uh, and I'm gonna, you have to learn something, you know, an entirely new way to work. So the, on, the, ver the ritual thing for the morning is really, really important. Again, if you're working online, but even more so if you're starting in sales. So what does that mean? So typically, the ritual that I have for an online uh, working remote person is I always try to move, right? Um, this might sound kind of trite, but the first thing you want to do is make sure that you get into a flow. So getting down and doing 10, 20, 30, 100 push-ups before you start the day, right? Make sure that you're hydrated with water, 
Again, it's going to be sound basic. Um, and the third thing is make sure that you're always um, setting intention for the day before you start your, your ritual or before you start your, your work day. Okay, so like uh, water, right? Move, water, and then goals. So I have, I'm having this person uh, before he start his day start with, hey, the, today I'm going to work for X number of hours and I'm going to produce X number of appointments, right? That's the output. And when you come, uh, when you think of the goals here, you want to think in terms of outputs, how many appointments you are generating, input, what activities, how you're going to get there, right? And then the goals here is always another one is learning or what I call growth, right? What are you going to put into your brain to be better today? So this part is just getting ready. So by the time that you start and you open up your laptop and the screen flicks on, you're already in a good state. You might add music here. Again, right? If you're in a car, you listen to the radio, or hopefully you listen to something inspiring in your, on, your, on your phone. So why wouldn't you do that when you're at home, right? Especially if you just roll out of your bedroom. So that's the first important piece. Always have a ritual. By the time that you start your office, quote unquote, come to your office here uh, next to your bed, you should already be in a prime state to start and win the day. Again, this might not matter as much if you're in a success role. I would argue otherwise, but for sure in sales, you can't not have this. Okay, so that's the first one with the ritual. The second thing is daily metrics. This is the other thing that is missing when you go into an online role versus an office. Everybody's working remote. If you don't have a way to measure and um, uh, improve with daily metrics, you, you're going to struggle, again, especially if you're brand new to the, the role of sales. So when it comes to metrics for unemployment centers, and I, I, group, I loop a couple of things in here. It's not just about the numbers. Is number one is always, always, always a daily huddle, <clears throat> okay? So you need a daily huddle, and that's a meeting with you and your with yourself and your sales team. So this could be other setters in your team, and or oftentimes the sales team at large, the closer, and the usually the head of sales or the, the sales manager or the founder of the company. Without this, and this this needs to be daily, okay? At le and even if you do it for, for 10, 15 minutes, it sets up this ritual and this rhythm. Again, if you go to the office, you would actually be meeting people on your way in. You might stand by the coffee and the water cooler for a couple of minutes, right? Um, this takes it to the next to another level. This huddle is very high energy. It's meant to not be there wasting time talking gossip. This is talking about goals for the day, challenge you had the previous day, and also what you're committed to, to doing for the day, right? So in your setup of your, your goals out here, right, because you already done this prep, you're going to come to this huddle ready to share your goal for the day and any challenge that you have. So this is kind of like a hot seat. Quickly go through all everyone on, on, on the meeting. Everyone go for one or two minutes. Hey, this is what I'm committed to doing today. Here's what my input and output goals are. And also what challenge do I need? Or, hey, what things do I need to learn today and who can I learn it from on that meeting to get it done, okay? So that's the very first thing. This is at the beginning of the day, okay? At the end of the day is what I call end of the day uh, updates, okay? And this can be done in uh, a reporting app or in Slack. Um, and I'm gonna give credit to where credit is due. I learned this piece from um, Cole Gordon. OG when it comes to sales management um, for online um, uh, companies. <clears throat> so end of the day metrics is you set your goal for the day right in the huddle. You set your intentions out here. End of the day is, hey, did I actually accomplish what I set out to do, right? So at the end of the day of the update here is the, it's a written report, if you will, of your output and your KPIs, right? Whether you've accomplished what you set out in your goals and also, um, uh, notes on meetings that you've set. Okay, so what this means is you start the day with an intention, you end the day with an assessment in how you've done. So over time, you and your sales manager can very see clearly, like, are you actually accomplishing your goals and where your struggles points are. This end of the day update, right, 
should inform and help you set and improve your output and input for the next the following day. So it works in tandem while you share that in the huddle. Okay, so I use this and also the third thing down here is really this is what the KPI is. So I have a, a, a Google Sheet KPIs with calls, schedule appointment, um, attended appointment, close one deals, right? For the setter and the, the closer. Everybody used the same sheet. At, um, at one point I was managing 10 reps and everyone, a combination of a, a closer and appointment setters, everyone used the same sheet. It all actually funnels into a master sheet where we could see the conversion for each rep, your sales rate, your revenue, your booking, your show attendance rate, and it all actually funnels into the company's numbers. Um, so this is the written report. This is kind of the, like the number report. And then this is like a human interaction. With these three, three things combined, if you, if you actually have and commit to this, it will actually improve your results because you're so in tune with the numbers and your numbers and your, your, your KPIs. Okay, so that's the third piece, metrics. And then the last piece is growth. And growth is very simple when it comes to growth. It all has to do with um, continuous learning. Okay, so every day I want to be learning something that helps me get better at my job, right, outside of the work hours. So this includes listening to sales calls at the companies, right, at the company you're working for, um, especially from the best salespeople on your team and the setters that you have on your team as well. Um, uh, it includes, uh, uh, you know, role playing uh, with yourself or with, with a team member on your script to get better. It includes practicing objections. So every day you want to actually kind of feed your brain, right, with information and training and uh, uh, practices that help you get better at the job. What I've seen a lot of reps don't do is they think that once they get the job, that's the end of it. But contrary to that belief, once you get the job, that's the beginning <laughs> of the work, not the end. Um, the other thing I would also say though is this learning, it's great if, if you're lucky and your company provides it, right? If you have a high performance culture where they provide the training or as part of the learning, uh, the group, everyone is helping each other with the learning here. Not every company is like that. Or if you're working solo, you're the first setter or the first hire of the company, you might not have that. It has to come from the self, right? So even if the company doesn't provide you with the have this training culture, you can ask the company for additional training or you have somebody like me where you work, who you work with, to help you with your training and con continuous improvement. So this becomes this wheels where every day you're priming yourself to be the best, right? To be ready for the, for the, for the task at hand and you continue that and it sets your foundation. Then you go and you execute for the day and you keep track of your numbers, you keep track of your, your, um, your results. Um, coupling with your growth, right? And your learning, it should inform your rituals and your metric and your growth and it becomes this foundation piece that no matter what you do, um, uh, it's gonna help you learn and, and improve over time. And really most people who don't succeed online and don't succeed in a, in a settled role, it's not because they're not smart. It's not because they don't have what it takes. Usually it's because they don't have the foundation uh, of what it what is required to be successful with an online role and um, like online remote and a sales role, right? A sales uh, function of the, of the company. I find it with success and, um, you know, maybe project management, the foundations are already there because you have to learn and you have to go to school. Or if, when it comes to uh, success, uh, there's already ticketing systems and like trainings are already there. The delivery team's always going to be there to help you with that. With sales, it's like, hey, you're oftentimes being thrown into <laughs> the water, trying to learn and also trying to su survive at the same time. And so a lot of the time lacking any support from the founder or the company because they're busy, right? They're in a startup mode. So if you can nail these three, the learning or the development of your of your uh, yourself as a setter kind of take care of itself. One last thing I will give a bonus because I've noticed with this person here, Again, this is if you've never worked on an office or an online remote before, the bonus here 
is learn productivity trick. Okay. And what I mean by this is keyboard shortcuts are your best friends as you work online. That's literally your tool set. <laughs> if you're a server or if you're working in a restaurant, you have tips and tricks on how to be more efficient at the job or at, you know, plating or whatever. I'm reaching here because I've never been in, ser in a serving role. Uh, but when it comes to uh, online, most people don't know how to use keyboard shortcuts. They don't even know like, hey, how to switch between windows uh, uh, efficiently or how to like, use like text replacement um, to, you know, basically have a shortcut that will spit out a paragraph that you use all the time. So learn some basic tricks uh, with, uh, with productivity on your, on your Mac or your, your, I'm a Mac guy. Always, I think most of us should be on Mac anyway. Most sales people should be on Mac uh, anyways uh, over Windows. Um, but learn basic things like how do I switch between two windows really quickly if I'm taking notes and I'm on a phone, like how do I switch between the two or when I'm sharing screen, you're going to be so much more confident and uh, more productive because every click that you save because of your role and what you do, um, like you're doing thousands of clicks a day in keyboard typing, right? If you learn one thing that can save you one click, that compounds over time. And I'll go... This is kind of what I know that on. I will go into more details um, on a maybe a future video on a, on like the best shortcuts and apps and extension for uh, for salespeople because I was sharing some very basic information with the sales rep and he was blown away. Um, so maybe we'll do a future episode on that. But those are the, the key three things. Um, make sure again, right? Make sure that you get ready, you track your numbers, and you continue to learn. Yes.